Hey everybody, so I thought I had finished this entire tutorial and then I actually wore my new shoes out and about to do some stuff and I discovered they're a little bit, they're a little bit, uh, they're a little bit short from my heel. The, the heel here kept, um, kept slipping off my foot. It wasn't a huge deal because I had the top part of my foot to, uh, keep the shoe on and it's a nice spongy sort of yarn to walk on but it is annoying because you know I want a shoe that actually stays on like some sort of fancy person um so in the in the video you're about to watch when I start stitching onto the sole which uh I show you how I stitch onto the sole after you stitch that first um that first set of single crochets around the sole, I'm going to recommend you do two or three more rounds of single crochet before you pick up the pattern at the back loop only row so that you can hopefully guarantee a better fit around your heel so that your shoes will actually stay on. Um, I'm probably gonna go in and add another couple of rows to these, but I don't have the yarn with me because I'm traveling right now. Uh, so it'll just be a, you know, touch it up when I get home sort of project. But I wanted you to know that before you jumped into the whole tutorial and I didn't want you to find out when you thought you were done that you weren't done yet. So I will go now so you can get into the actual full tutorial. Have a good time. Hey everybody, it's Gail. Welcome back to Errata Hate. This is episode 11 and I thought to start off this season, if you will, uh, we might make ourselves a pair of shoes. Uh, for the pattern to do this, I have chosen a loafer pattern that I've made before. Uh, these were for a cosplay that no longer fits, but I kept these because they're comfy. Um, and rather than making just a yarn shoe that I can't really wear outside because it's the Pacific Northwest, so it's damp like 90% of the time, I decided it was time to pull a Pinterest, get myself a pair of flip-flops, and then use these as the sole of the shoe and then make the rest of the shoe with yarn. So the pattern we're using calls out for uh, double stranding your yarn. So taking a worsted weight and working two strands at the same time with an H hook so that you get kind of a bulky yarn, uh, but it'll have a nice tight weave because you're using a smaller hook. Uh, but what I did instead is I went out and I found Red Heart Strata, which is um, a pretty soft uh, nylon and acrylic yarn that I just, I, I liked the look of it and I liked the texture of it. And it's got the same thickness because it's a, it's a five. Um, a five. It's got the same thickness as if I was two stranding Karen Simply Soft, which is what I used for the slippers I just showed you. So I grabbed two skeins um, because it said anywhere between three and a half ounces to about five ounces, depending on your shoe size. Um, so you need a couple strains, a couple of skeins. You'll need your flip flops. And then you need all the stuff you're gonna need to make your flip-flops into shoes. And that includes, of course, your H hook because you're gonna be making shoes with yarn. Uh, it also includes a pair of scissors so that we can take the straps off. It includes shoe goo or something similar, which is a, uh, a repair thing for, it's a repair goo for shoes, which I will be using to plug the holes that will be made when we cut the different pieces of the flip-flops off. And then um, you're gonna need something sharp and pointy to poke all the holes into the flip-flop uh, where the yarn is gonna go. And that's gonna be super interesting to watch me do because I've already stabbed myself with this thing once. Uh, this, by the way, is an owl, it's A-W-L. Uh, you can find it in book binding sections at craft stores. Uh, it's generally used to poke holes into the spine of a book so you can uh, thread, binding thread through it, but it's it's a sharp and pointy and that's what I need, so that's what I'm using. So next thing that's gonna happen, this video is gonna cut away to a second part where I'm going to dismantle these and then I'm going to start placing my, um, I'm gonna start placing the marks for all the holes I need to poke into the flip-flops. And uh, I need, I think for my size, 59 or 60 holes, so this should be really interesting too kind of get it all spaced out correctly. So I will see you in just a minute to start doing that. Hey everybody, it's Gail behind the camera. We are here with this flip-flop to start destroying it to make something cooler. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is just take my scissors and cut through the top piece of plastic. And I'm going to pop out the bottom of that. And then I'm going to come down here. I was testing this earlier, and these two pieces on the bottom are not as loose as that top piece was. But I do think they'll probably pop out pretty easily. Um, just going to... Wow, that's... That's a hearty piece of plastic, which is always good to find in a pair of cheap flip-flops. Um, I am in need of a pair of cheap flip-flops for the summer, but these ain't gonna be it. And then, I was hoping... Okay. So, I'm gonna do a dumb thing that I probably shouldn't do and stick my scissors in there. Try to use them as a pry bar. Oh, there we go. That worked really well. So, these are foam flip-flops, by the way. Um, pretty sturdy. I got them at Joann's on sale. Um, I find generally, you know, you can get like the dollar flip-flops that are good for, you know, just getting around and what have you. Um, but I definitely wanted to stir to your soul, which is why I got these. And it looks like that trick to shove pointy things into the holes worked. So, there we go. The flip-flop has been deflipped. Uh, I will be doing the shugu is the last thing I do on these, so they'll be in a different part of the video. I wanted to show you, um, the pattern tells you how many whole, how many stitches you need by the time you're done with the sole. And in my case, it was 66. And so, uh, you, if you look here, this is where I erased a previous mark. And so this is my new chance. It took me two, two tries to get the marks, uh, spaced pretty well. And so the next thing I'm going to do is get out my sharp and pointy and start jamming it in here. Uh, you'll notice I did it halfway down the sole, and that's because the tutorials I've seen have shown it that way so that you don't, uh, so that your yarn is on the side of the sole and you're not going to wear the yarn out because it's, it's touching the ground all the time. But just, whoa, I think that landed right in my cleavage. You're welcome. Uh, here we go. So to get started, I just want to see how this works. Make sure you guys see me doing this. Gonna take a damn finger off, probably. Alright, so we're gonna go right here. And then I'm gonna come in at an angle. There we go, because you want enough room to, uh, to have the yarn wrap around something pretty good sized. Now, will my H hook fit through this? Probably not right now. I'm probably gonna have to work it a little bit. Uh, my H hook should be right in front of me. There it is. Okay, so I've got the starting pole. Let's see how my H hook does. Yeah, like it's not... Oh, hey, there it goes. Oh, and I think I just cracked it. Oh, did I crack it? Oh, de -de 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 -de. let's see. I think I may... Yeah. I cracked the edge there, but that's okay, because we have Shugo. Um... But that probably also means that for that first round I do, I will use a smaller hook. Um, so that I don't have to worry about cracking it like that. Okay, I'm going to go do a few more of these and make sure I don't completely screw it up, and I will be back. Alright, it's literally, it's literally actually only been a couple of minutes, but I wanted to show you. Uh, I started poking the first holes, and it looks like uh, it's going to work. I was able to get the yarn in with my uh, two and a quarter millimeter. So um, it's going to make it interesting to see how that first round goes. And fingers crossed it works. But I also went ahead and pulled the, uh, the flop off of this one. And I just wanted to show you my plan for lining up my... Lining up my stitches is pretty easy. I'm just putting one on top of the other. And then I'm going to be drawing the markings for this flip-flop just according to this top one so that I don't have to guess again. Uh, so I'm going to go, um, I'm going to draw my marks, going to poke a bunch of holes, uh, going to poke a bunch of holes, and then I will be back to close off these gaps. Hey everybody, I just wanted you to see the angle I'm working on. I'm on my last side of the second sole, so I'm nearly done. Uh, I, I cracked another bit of the sidewall on this one, but I already got a shoe goo the other one for the same reason. So we'll see how, how dainty I can be with the shoe goo. Um, so I've got all these marks in, and I'm coming in from down at the bottom of the mark and doing my best to angle in so that 
uh, I'm, I'm, I need to get in the sole so there's a good base to put the stitch in, but uh, not so far in that I'm taking up a lot of real estate, and then not so far out that I do that, which is because um, I was a little too far to the outside of the sole when I was working on it. I'm gonna twist this on out, uh, do it again for you. So again, kind of near the bottom, and actually a little under it, just because it's a smaller mark. Come up back through. And this definitely takes some hand strength, so, you know, be kind to your hands and be careful. Uh, I'm proud to say I've made it this far and I've yet to stab myself, so that's a really good run for me. Um, and one more. Just so we can see it one last time. So you're just going to want to keep it at about that angle. Um, you know, they don't have to be perfectly in line with one another. That's something people won't be able to tell. Uh, and they'll look pretty cool, so I don't think anyone's going to care. Uh, so I'm going to go and finish this and probably do all the shoe goo stuff tomorrow when I can have the doors open because that stuff is pungent. Hey everybody, I just wanted to take a minute and show you where in the pattern I got that number 66 for poking all the holes in the soles. Yeah, that rhymed. Um, so it's on page three and if you scroll down to row three here, um, it's referencing this photo here, which is the last photo of the sole before you join on and start working your way up. And if you come down to row total stitches, it shows you how many stitches per size. And so I'm using 66 because I'm making a seven to eight size shoe. Um, and so that's where you're gonna pull the number to decide uh, how, many, how many holes you need to poke in your shoes and uh, and then what I'm going to do after that is start actually working the pattern from row four. And it says stitch back loop only, but what I'm going to do is work a row of single crochet before I start row four so that I do have a base row to work on. So just wanted you to see that. I will be back with all the shoe goo fun uh, in a few minutes. Hey everybody, we're back. I'm doing the shoe goo portion of the shoes. So I already did one, and you can see that I filled in the holes on the bottom here. Uh, this one I'm going to have to come back in and smooth that out because you want a nice smooth finish. And you'll see on the top side I did not come all the way through the holes. Um, I don't think I'm going to need to, honestly, because how I did it on the back should keep it uh, sealed. And that's really what the big concern is, is that you don't want to, you know, get water on your feet or something while wearing these. And so now I have this other one, which I have not done yet. And the first thing I'm going to do is repair these couple of small... I've got a crack there that needs repaired. And then over on this side, I need to repair that crack. And that's just... I'm going to put a very thin layer of sugar on it to hold it in place because I don't want it to break off while we're making these shoes. So... I've got my trusty shoe goo, and we've got the door open, and I've got my hair secured, because I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> also, I'm clearly not working my own camera right now. So, using a, uh, using a Q-tip. Oh, cotton swab. I'm sorry, using a generic white cotton swab. Uh, I'm going to just take a, a lump of shoe goo, and I'm going to put it onto this crack. And, well, okay, fine. I'm going Wait, to use the Q-tip to hold the shoe goo and then rub it into place with my finger. And shoe goo is, um, it's a protectant and it's also meant to uh, be used as sort of a, how did they phrase it? It's a shoe repair and protective coating. And so it's a little bit sticky, but it's not sticky in a way that's difficult to get off. Like when I did the other one, I used my fingers too, and it all, and it came off pretty quickly with just a little bit of soap and water. And so I've taken another little nubbin and I'm coming over here, smoothing it down over this crack. And once this all dries, I am going to take my sharp and pointy and make sure that these will hold and that the holes will stay as open as I need them to work on them. So, all right, we are going to turn this over so I can get to the bottom here. 
And uh, the great thing about putting it on the sides instead of having to put it on the top is I can do both of these repairs at the same time. So to do the three holes that we need to fill, I'm just going to get a bubble of shoe goo going. By the way, shoe goo officially does not sound like a real word. Um, it takes a little bit of effort. Need my help? Uh, no, I got it. Okay. Uh, if you've got any kids around that want to feel big and strong, make them do it. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to just drop it down. And that went all the way through. I bet you anything. Oh, nope, it's fine. You can see the little bubble. Um, yeah, it looks good. But now I'm going to... Got another bubble going. Just going to use my finger here to sort of pack it in. Um, and you want a nice flat surface if you can get it. And that one actually came out perfectly on the first yeah, try. Look at, look at that. And now... I'm just going to keep squeezing and repeating. Uh, we can skip. You see how to do it, so I'm not going to make you watch me squeeze the shoe goo out again. Um, so it says to take 24 hours to let it set. And I'm going to disagree with it because this is not a true repair, and we're not doing this as a true protective coating. Give it a few hours to get dry enough that you don't have to worry about it. Um, and then you can start working the yarn in. Uh, the other big thing about it is uh, it's it's a pretty dense liquid, so I don't think it's probably going to fall out if you start it sooner than what I'm recommending, but I do think that the 24 hours is an unnecessary wait time to start working on the next part of the project, which will be actually getting the yarn on the shoes, which I will be doing uh, after I finish this, so I'll see you guys in a bit. Brought to you by Thompson's Brand Shoe Goo. It's shoe for your goo. Hey everybody, back to a stationary camera for this bit. I went ahead and did my starting row on one of the flip-flops and um, learned a few things I'm happy to pass along already. Um, and I'll get to this bit in a minute. Uh, first of all, when you do work this, you might end up causing a couple of cracks like we fixed up earlier. So, like, there's one right there. And there's a couple more throughout, and so what I'm going to do after I finish, completely finish both shoes, is go in with the shoe goo and just uh, reinforce those points. Because the point where I did reinforce on this one, which is right here, uh, held perfectly while I was sewing. So I think that uh, just reinforcing those spots will be good. Um, so here is my other sole and I'm going to work it the same way I worked this other one. I'm not going to show you the whole process because it's pretty repetitive but I will get us started. So first things first, sticking it in uh, sort of right in the center on the back and I'm going to wiggle my, uh, my needle around a little bit just to open up the hole a little bit. I had some issues with it catching um, and like even when you wiggle it around you still sometimes got to get in there and really work it. And something I found out was that my nail clippers, uh, as long as you don't mind having uh, dents in your tapestry needles, are a really good way to get that started. So we're just going to pull all the way through and leave a bit of a tail at the end. Uh, so let me double check that. Okay, and this yarn does bunch a little bit, but as long as you sort of keep one hand on it, it smooths out very easily. It did not give me any trouble. Um, it's actually, this is interesting, the Strata yarn is a tube with a uh, white fuzz in it. I did not know that. I just picked it because it looked cool. So I'm going to leave myself a bit of a tail. And then I'm going to come to the second hole, and I'm going to wiggle again, but then I'm also going to come down and wiggle that direction because I'm actually going to be sewing down into the hole. Oh, and it looks like I'm going to have a little bit of a break there. Let me see if I can get that in focus. 
Yeah, that one's going to be a bit of a break that will have to be repaired. But like I said, you know, just go back in with the shoe goo. Oh, I dropped it. Hold on. Hold steady. Got it. Go back in with the shoe goo. And I don't think it'll be a big problem. Uh, we'll know as soon as we... Yep, okay. That's properly through. I had to punch a couple of new holes after I uh, actually broke through, like, going across this way a couple of times. Um, so here's our third hole. I'm going to come up here, wiggle it around, keep doing the same thing. And you'll notice uh, it's every other stitch is on the top and every other stitch is on the side. So, you know, first stitch, second stitch, third stitch, fourth stitch, etc. And so when I start working the actual pattern, I'll just be coming down here. I'll just be working from the sole down to the side uh, to get my pattern stitches right. And this hole is also giving me grief. Um, so back to my nail clippers. Pair of needle nose pliers should do this as well. Um, in case you don't know if your nail clippers are trustworthy. There we go. So that is the start of the, of the sole process. I'm going to set this aside and bring in my finished one real quick to show you a couple of things. Um... First of all, once I got all the way to the end here, I went back through starting from the last stitch and I, I am clumsy today, guys. I'm sorry about that. Um, went through the last stitch here and through every other stitch and just pulled up slightly so there's enough room to get a crochet hook under there. I wanted to make sure nothing was too tight. And then when I tied off on this last stitch, I tied it pretty loose so that I can do a stitch in that knot to act as my first stitch when I start stitching to the pattern. Uh, so that is how things are right now. I am gonna go now, finish putting the lace in the preview in the other one, and then uh, hopefully be able to come back with a pair of shoes to show you. So I'll talk to you soon. It's a shoe. Um, so I've gotten this first one done. Uh, I don't have the second one done, but then I realized I don't actually need the pair done to show you what the finished product looks like because they're supposed to match. So I uh, worked the pattern from that row that I showed you earlier and just worked my way around. I did a slightly different uh, sort of decorative strap. I was trying to do like a fringe loafer thing, but I think it would work better with a smaller yarn. Um, but I wanted to show you a couple of things. First of all, I did end up uh, busting through on one stitch, but only one stitch. So I'm really happy about that. So I'm going to go back in. I'm going to shoe glue this to close it off. And then I'm probably going to hot glue this because hot glue is the answer to everything. I'm also going to sort of shoe glue around into all the various spots just for a little bit of reinforcement. It feels very comfortable when I wear it. It doesn't feel like anything's loose, but I like to be sure. Uh, the other thing is on the back, what I did was once I finished, I made sure it was good and knotted tight. And so I'm going to dab a little shoe goo on the, uh, on the ends to keep them closed. Uh, also, like, I think it's really weird that this yarn has, like, an interior. It has guts. Um, yeah, and it looks flat, but it fits really well. Um, and, you know, you can, maybe you can see my fingers. Like, your toes are going to show a little bit, but, you know, it's coming up on summer. It's the perfect time to have a shoe that's, uh, your toes can be seen through a little bit for the fact that it gets hot. And we don't have a lot of air conditioning up here. Uh, yay, Pacific Northwest. But, yeah, I'm very happy with it. I, It looks good. It feels good. It is a shoe I can wear outside. And if it gets a little damp, uh, I'll survive. So it's done. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. And I will see you all again for episode 12, 12, it's 12.